Imagine you were relaxing at home, getting ready to take a drive to the mall or drive to work, perhaps, uh, when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this happened. From our Manatee County newsroom, a Bradenton woman gets a six-foot surprise in her garage. A Burmese python had wrapped itself around the engine of the woman's SUV. It took trappers two hours to remove the snake. Two hours to remove the snake. A six-foot-long Burmese python wrapped around your car's engine. What do you do in a situation like that? Presumably after you are done freaking out, you call in the professionals to come take care of the six-foot-long Burmese python wrapped around your engine block. Uh, unfortunately for the snakeophobes among us, this problem of enormous snakes turning up where they are not supposed to be is not a problem that is confined to that one Florida woman and her one garage. It was big enough to hunt down prey the size of an eight-year-old child. A massive python was captured this weekend after being spotted near a Bradenton strip mall. He lunged at me twice. He was hissing the whole time. I hated to do it, but I did have to hit him upside the head a couple times. A professional trapper, even Matthews, needed backup when he came face-to-face -face with this 107-pound python in this drainage ditch, curled up and ready to strike. Pythons in your garage, pythons in your local drainage ditch, big exotic snakes being found with relatively alarming frequency in places where uh, big exotic snakes should not necessarily be. Now that this 12-foot, 100-pound anaconda was found and captured, curled up in a storm drain next to that pond, it seems to be the one with the appetite for waterfowl. You know, I ain't really afraid of snakes, but that was a big snake. They would easily ate a 100-pound dog, which I got two dogs, so... Yes, it's not just pythons turning up in Florida neighborhoods, uh, ponds and things. It's also not, it's not just pythons. It's also anacondas. What you're looking at here is three police officers battling a 14 and a half foot, 200 pound African rock python spotted near a Florida apartment complex. The African rock python is the largest snake in Africa. They eat stuff like goats, warthogs and crocodiles, and they eat those things whole. So this is a job that exists in America now, wrangling exotic invasive species snakes, trapping snakes, removing snakes from places where snakes should not be. As you might imagine, it's not necessarily a safe job. According to the Humane Society, most of the people who have been killed recently in the United States by reticulated and Burmese pythons have been adults who have experience handling giant reptiles. But still, it is a job nonetheless. And one of the reasons that job exists is because those snakes are being imported to the United States. They are being shipped in, bought and sold, and even bred right here in America, which I guess means that that could also be your job. You could be the person whose job it is to get this anaconda pregnant. Congratulations. It's a zillion baby anacondas. Uh, I mention all of this because yesterday in the Republican-controlled United States House of Representatives, the Republicans called in a snake breeder to testify against plans by the Obama administration to make invasive species giant foreign snakes more difficult to import into this country. There are nine species on the list, snakes like the Burmese python, the reticulated python, and the yellow anaconda. Under something called the Lacey Act, the Interior Department is supposed to regulate importing and interstate sale of species determined, uh, determined to be injurious to humans, to the interests of agriculture, to horticulture or forestry, or to forestry or to the welfare and survival of wildlife resources of the United States. This is what they're supposed to be doing. And they're not saying that you, you can't have a yellow anaconda pet anymore. They're not banning these snakes outright. It's just that you can't import them or transfer them across state lines. It's putting these snakes in the same category as other controlled animals like, say, the mongoose or the Indian wild dog. The Republican snakes on a plane hearing made national news this week when Democratic Congressman Jerry Connolly of Virginia started publicizing the snakes on a plane hearing, mocking the Republicans first on their big idea that liberating the anacondas from onerous regulations is somehow a good idea. If only regulations like this went away, then the business climate in America would be awesome. In Congressman Connolly's words, quote, if regulations and economic growth were inversely related, then sub-Saharan Africa would have the most productive economy on earth.
Good point. Mr. Connolly is also drawing attention to the snakes on a plane hearing as a way of pointing out that the Republicans are not really working on jobs right now in Congress. They are instead working on stuff like this and calling it jobs. And while I'm sure it is a cool perk of being a congressman that you can have the snake breeding guy with the amazing hair in your hearing room, that is, in fact, what the Republican-controlled House is convening hearings about right now, while the president, on the other hand, is touring the country promoting his $450 billion comprehensive jobs legislation. So far, the response from the House Republican leadership to the president's big jobs proposal has not taken the form of legislative action or hearings like the ones they held on the snake guy. It's rather taken the form of speeches like the one House Speaker John Boehner gave today, where he derided the United States Senate as if the Senate is the place where they are really working, uh, as that the Senates are not the ones working on jobs, while the House is. The Senate hasn't been doing anything, and the House, well, the House has really just been Johnny on the spot. The United States Senate needs to act, too. The Senate can't uh, sit uh, idle on jobs in the budget. Yeah, not when the House is doing so much work on liberating the anacondas. Uh, John Boehner's speech on the economy today took a few uh, remarkable turns. Uh, for example, there was this line. Another thing we can do in this area of, it would be in the area of transportation and infrastructure. <clears throat> I'm not opposed uh, to responsible spending to repair and improve our infrastructure. Awesome. John Boehner is for infrastructure spending. However, he says there's one condition attached to that. But if we want to do it in a way that truly supports long-term economic growth and job creation, let's link the next highway bill uh, to an expansion of American-made energy production. John Boehner, Speaker of the House, is saying that in theory he likes infrastructure spending, but Republicans are only going to approve infrastructure spending if... Drill, baby, drill. What is the connection between infrastructure spending and drill, baby, drill? John Boehner has a theory about that. He says there is a, quote, natural link between the two. Listen. As we de develop new sources of American energy, uh, we're going to need modern infrastructure to bring that energy to market. That's the link, which I guess means oil tankers, I can't get through if the bridges have collapsed into the water. What is the connection between drill, baby, drill and infrastructure spending? Why are these things naturally connected? Speaker Boehner also said today, coming off a debt ceiling fight in which Republicans walked away from the table too many times to count, that, quote, politicians of all stripes can leave the my way or the highway philosophy behind. Sort of like getting advice from Bugs Bunny to stop being wascally. John Boehner's speech on the economy was a lesson in head-on-desk hypocritical inexplicability. But because President Obama belongs to something called the Democratic Party, President Obama is also dealing with headwinds on his jobs proposal from his own side of the aisle. And some of those headwinds are just as inexplicable as the ones coming from Mr. Boehner. Today, for example, Democratic Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania told The New York Times in an interview that he is opposed to the president's jobs legislation, too. Why is he opposed to it? Because the bill is long. Seriously, it's too long as a piece of legislation. There are too many pieces of paper. Quoting Senator Casey, I think the American people are very skeptical of big pieces of legislation. For that reason alone, I think we should break it up. For that reason alone, really? The objection to the bill is how long it is. What if we changed the font, sir? Would that be better for you? Widen the margins, maybe? How about if we put the whole thing in Comic Sans? That's kind of a compact font. Would that help? The problem is it's too long. Are you serious? But through this big competition for the most inane response to the president's jobs proposal, the president's proposal to do something about the economy, uh, there is actually a little bit of hope today. Part of that hope was spotted and diagnosed today by former President Jimmy Carter, who I spoke with in an exclusive interview here this morning in Atlanta at the Carter Center. His take on the president's jobs bill is that it will pass. He believes it will pass, at least parts of it will, because of the way that President Obama is pursuing this legislation. I asked President Carter today how, in an obstructionist political climate and against entrenched interests, a president could win a big fight like this. This was his answer. The only way to do that, if there is a way, is to, is to draft what, what the president thinks is a right proposal and then completely override the Congress in taking that proposal to the people directly. Mm. 
and use a powerful influence, the bully pulpit of the White House to prevail, if you can prevail. And I think, I think reluctantly, and, and maybe not too late, but quite late, uh, President Obama has learned that. For the first time, with his jobs proposal, that was drafted in the White House and he made the proposal to Congress in a very effective speech, one of his best ones, and now he's taken his case to the public to say, okay, this is what I propose, this is what the Congress is likely to do, choose between me and the Congress in the upcoming election in 2012. We will have more on President Carter and his surprisingly optimistic assessment of how President Obama is doing right now politically. Also, his rather harsh words for the religious right and his pick for who should win the Republican nomination. That is all coming up this hour. But President Carter's assessment there that President Obama will get his jobs bill passed because of the way he's pursuing it in this barnstorming tour he's doing across the country about it. President Carter sees that as a positive, both for Mr. Obama politically, but also for the country, for the economy, if the jobs bill passes. The other ray of hope was something that was tucked into House Speaker John Boehner's aforementioned rather remarkable speech today. Listen to this. Tax reform should include closing loopholes, not for the purposes of bringing more money to the government, uh, because, but because it's the right thing to do and it's the fair thing to do. Tax reform should include, clo include closing loopholes. Okay, what exactly counts as a loophole to Speaker John Boehner? What President Obama's been proposing is stuff like no more tax subsidies for big oil companies. That's not the oil company's tax rate. That is a loophole through which they get taxpayer money. How about the tax subsidy for corporate jets? That's a loophole. How about the individual deductions on income that only rich people earn, that only rich people claim? Those are loopholes. Can those all be closed? Because those are many of the pay-fors that President Obama has been proposing for his jobs plan that Republicans at least before today, we're liking making lots of noises about rejecting out of hand. For all that was astonishing and at times laugh out loud funny about John Boehner's economy speech today, is there actually a ray of hope here? Is he doing what Jimmy Carter said today that Republicans would end up doing about this, which is that they would take on some of this jobs plan and go with it? Could some of this stuff pass?